second because I have to get what I call my PF readers to uh, find out what I'm supposed to, to say. Um, this film, which is what we based our reunion on, was uh, a story about uh, a gentleman by the name of Marty McFly. Do you remember Marty McFly? He was a teenager who accidentally sent back in time, who was sent back in time from 1985 to 1955. He went there to meet his, uh, he met, I should say, his future parents in high school and accidentally attracted his future mother's uh, romantic interest. Marty then had to repair that history uh, of, of, by causing his parents to fall again in love. Now, I'm not going to be so grandiose to say that that's what we're doing here today. And we're certainly not re repairing history. We're making history at this reunion. Jim, just being here. Just being here. And if I can be so bold as to say on the green side of grass, and I've used that so many times. Times. How many of you went to Manuel High School yesterday? Can I have a show of hands? What an opportunity we had. And those of you who weren't able to make it, you'll be able to share with us some of the memories that we took as uh, uh, we took some pictures of Bible Bill to share them with you. 
what an opportunity to go back to our alma mater and realize that, yes, indeed, it has been 50 years since we were back there. Because I was getting lost constantly in trying to find where the cafeteria was, <laughs> where the restrooms were, which is important at my age. You have to know where the restrooms were. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. <laughs> you, I already recognize, or I should say, uh, we've recognized our VIP table. But I'd like to recognize two special people from that table. One of it is Julia Mallard Gales, and the other is Don <laughs> These two individuals have been involved in many, many reunions. Julia was our advisor for the core working group. She's been working on reunions, she tells me, for 25 years. After six months of trying to put this reunion together, let me tell you what an achievement that really is. And not to be outdone, Don Short has been involved in our memorabilia room that's up there at Manual. If you haven't been up there, please go up there. We've had a lot of folks uh, that have put items from uh, all our classes and have uh, put a tremendous walk back in time, like Back to the Future. By the way, the theme for Back to the Future came from another, none other than Cheryl Hall, uh, and now Crump, and uh, we would certainly thank her for coming up with that unique theme. Now for us, going back to the future really means going back to our roots, and our roots are at Mangle High School. So I'm glad you're spending your time with us. I think you'll be, uh, in, you will enjoy a tremendous program that we're going to show you. Victor Friedman has a tremendous program that will tie up with, uh, on our theme. And then uh, we'll be able to share memories, we'll be able to share a meal together. You know, at, at our age, sharing a meal together is quite an accomplishment. So I hope you cherish it. So thank you very much for being here. Thank, for, thank you for the time you spent with us. It's really precious. Let's give another big hand to our most senior, senior class president. And in spite of, in spite of gravity, Tony, you're still speedy. So thanks a lot. Uh, we'd now like uh, to take a moment and pause and, and say grace and with that, we'd like to bring up uh, a, a, a very famous deacon in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, we're graced with the presence of uh, Michigan Hill. So Michigan, if you'd come forward and give us grace, that would be great. Or is it just an invocation? Or is it both? Anyway, he's on our side. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God and Father, we thank you for this opportunity this evening to share with one another, to be able to share a meal, all this wonderful time together, to reminisce. There are many of our classmates who could not make it for various reasons, and then there are those that are no longer with us. We thank you for this opportunity to reflect upon all of that, and thank you for this food that we are about to, to um, consume. May it be nourished to our bodies. Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 I guess I'm supposed to, well, I am supposed to read my name to the program. <laughs> this is from um, Jeanette Watts. She wrote one in 1963, and we couldn't get a hold of it, but she did write one for the 50th anniversary. She's at another event tonight participating. So here we go. <clears throat> we grave and reverenced life we thought the years went too fast. We traveled different paths. We spent in acquisition as we stood up to our tasks. In awe, with wonder, we are aghast. We've been blessed by our families with heartfelt gratitude. We look toward forward to vacations, holidays, and pay raises. But now we may discover what old folks said is true. Life's a journey seems hard with good days and bad days, but oh, what a blessing, the good outweighs the bad. Still armed with high endeavors, we will meet destiny with a smile and strive to leave a legacy undaunted. Remembering that life, despite misfortunes, is but an adventure and a vapor. So now we're saying,
thank you, God, for mercies that are now every moment for wisdom that led us to this moment in time. What old folks said is true. Life is a journey, and we are pilgrims traveling through time in a vein. Barnax gave us a life lesson when he said, never stand between a hungry manulite and his food. <laughs> so with that, Thunderbolts, let's eat. <laughs>
while we were all drinking margaritas and feeling pretty good. And I thought, okay, maybe I was just a little shy, but I think part of it was, and I think as we all grow, we become more self-confident. I didn't have the confidence that I probably needed to, to just perform as a 17-year-old at Manual High School. It was, a, it was a daunting task. The folks there were really smart, and if you didn't you know, get in the mix, you really couldn't compete, so you really had to think about that. And that's one of the things that, that you learned at Manual. You really had to compete. We're a very competitive group of people. I learned that a little bit later on, and I'm gonna skip some of the early years, but I, by any standard of any measurement, we in the class of 1963 are really a unique group of people. We are all, we're multicultural, as you can see by the people in this room. But I don't know that we knew that then. I don't know that it was something that was significant for us because we were just friends and friendly. And I know that by being here with the group this week because it's like we've never left. I don't think there's one person here who hasn't embraced the others. We've all sort of come together. And I think that's what is significant about the class of 1963. I don't think there will be another class like ours. We had the best instructors and it's so significant that Mr. Broadnax is here because he was one of those people that, that really helped us to grow. You know, you don't know that you're being helped until you have some distance that you can look back and say, these people were significant in my life. This teacher meant something to me. And you can tell by what everyone has said about Mr. Broadnax that he was one of those people. And we had lots of instructors and teachers who were like that. Um, there were a lot of things going on, a lot of events that were significant that played themselves out as we were beginning our growth to the future. In 1963, if you remember, and, and probably you don't because I had to look it up today, uh, President Kennedy signed the Equal Pay for Equal Work for Men and Women Act. Did you know that? Because you think of it as something that should have been a fait accompli, but it was not. It still is not. It's a law, but still doesn't work. Supreme Court ruled against Bible reading and prayer in public schools. Remember we used to pray? We used to, every day, and we'd say the Pledge of Allegiance. Martial law was declared in South Vietnam, and that set the tone for the longest war that we've been talking about at our table. I am a Vietnam era veteran. I joined the Army in 1963. I got out in 1966. I worked with guys coming back from Vietnam, and it was probably the best and worst work I've ever done. Because for me, watching these young men who were my age coming back, sort of just beaten up and injured and wounded, was really a life-altering experience and a really um, way of growing. It was a growth experience for me. Um, we left Denver one day after I graduated from high school. So I haven't actually lived here since I was 17 years old. But I, I turned the age of 18 watching the March on Washington. The I Have a Dream speech, not knowing how significant it would be 50 years later when we're here to celebrate that anniversary as well next week. There were so many things that really set the tone for our lives that it, it's hard to mention all of them. Um, the assassination of President Kennedy, uh, Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, the Black Panthers, all of those things that were part of our lives. Not to mention in 1963, Stevie Wonder's Fingertips Part Two and One. <laughs> that was significant for me because that's where I was. That's what I was thinking about. I wasn't thinking about the global or social implications of any of the things that I just mentioned because I was 18, as were all of you, or 17 or 18. So our lives were going in many different directions. So my journey and yours 
has really come full circle back to the future. Before yesterday, I think we were all just photos on a page. Uh, we had dim memories of who we all are and who we were. When anybody asks me whatever happened to the class of 1963, I just have to look around at each one of you. And while some of us didn't make it to this evening, others were not able to be here, I can look at us and say that we are still vibrant. We are still having a lot of fun. We're still cute. And whatever you've done to get here, I want to leave you with the idea of continuing to do that. Have a purpose in the life that you lead. And the, the biggest thing I'm learning is that as I go through the days, aging is not for wimps. It, it, it's a journey, but you have to get ready. And I, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure being here. It's fabulous to get to see you all and continued blessings. And he doesn't have charts. <laughs> no charts. <laughs> and no shoes either. Well, Rosie, you're a hard act to follow, I have to, oh, no. have to admit. Um, it's so good to be back home again. Oh, yeah. You're probably wondering about my shoes, right? Well, I'll return to my shoes in a minute. Yeah, gosh, I, I haven't been so nervous since I graduated from high school, manual, and uh, I may have to rely on my nose, but I hope I don't have to. Um, my objective, uh, we're going to watch a short movie tonight, about 28 minutes, and my objective, uh, by the way, can everybody hear me back there okay? Yeah. All right, uh, my objective in producing tonight's movie uh, was to incorporate our our theme, uh, Back to the Future, but I wanted to do it in a unique way. So um, I decided to use a 1960s vintage jukebox um, to take us on a spin through time from 1963 to the present. And I hope you'll enjoy watching it as much as I enjoy producing it. Uh, it's not a professional production, it's an amateur production, but I wanted to incorporate in that movie my feelings and my experiences that I think I shared with all of you at Manual. So, uh, Gordon, do, do I have a little time to say a few words about tonight? Um, uh, how many seconds do I have left, Gordon? Okay, uh, no charts though. Okay, no charts. Okay, tonight, tonight we celebrate 50 years. But tonight we also pay tribute. We pay tribute to those who enabled us. Our teachers, our families, our friends. And please forgive me in advance if moving along tonight, I stumble, I stumble with emotion. It's all about memories tonight for all of us. 50 years, half a century ago, I remember standing on the Manual High School stage to give my valedictorian presentation. And I remember that my hands were so cold. I remember that my hands were clammy. And I remember that I was so nervous. And I was nervous because I was asked to speak of something I do nothing about, our future. Now, my parents, like your parents, 
knew no more about the future than I did. But like your parents, they knew about the past. And what my parents knew about their past prompted them to provide their children, that's my sister and I, with educational opportunities that promise a kinder, a gentler, a more secure kind of life than the one they were leading. So in 1963, In 1963, they used part of their meager savings to buy me the shoes. I still have them. That's the first forgiveness. <laughs> they bought these shoes so that I would look presentable on the Manual High School stage when I gave my speech. They bought these shoes so that I could walk proudly to accept my Manual High School diploma. And they bought these shoes so that I would look presentable, handsomely dressed at the Manual High School prom. We all owe so much to those who nurtured us. Let us take a moment to reflect on those who were important in our lives, Emmanuel. Fifty years, now we're back. My shoes, I, and you. And yes, my hands are cold again tonight. And they're clammy. And yes, I am nervous, as you can tell. Because I am humbled. I am humbled by the achievements of the class of 1963. You know, as I think back, I think of my family. We think of our neighborhoods. We think of our friends. We think of our school. This is the manual community I remember. Uniquely competent and free, free of racial, ethnic, religious prejudice. Manual treated everyone equally. Not everyone inside or outside the manual community believed in our potential for success. Not everyone did. Not even some of our teachers and advisors. But those who did were not disappointed. We launched ourselves into the future with an energy, an enthusiasm, an optimism that I can only dream about today with a smile. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. said, "I." have a dream. In 1963, Emmanuel put us on the path of our dreams. In our own way, in our own way, each of us has contributed to our families, to our communities, to our country. Now, please join me and my shoes for a nostalgic walk back to the future. Thank you for celebrating with us tonight. Well, what do you think of that video? Wasn't that great? Thank you, Victor. And for uh, all of our uh, alumni or graduates of the class of 63, you received in your gift bag this video, which is a copy of that video. So take it home. Share it with your children, convince them that you can still dance. Uh, in the team, I said that wrong. I is not in team. This is my team. And I've understood and I understand that without this team, this reunion would have not taken place. So I have a present for each and every one of you.
Cheryl Hall. <laughs> Our cheerleader. Patricia. Victor Friedman, my dear friend. Gordon Ayagi, our MC. Julia Mallard Gales. <laughs> Dorothy Hayden Watson. Dorothy was really the person that set up the structure of this entire group, and I owe a lot. So, um, and this next one is Mr. Chetbook, Michigan Hill. <laughs> and another dear friend. Thank you all, and uh, have a great night, enjoy the night. And I wish it wouldn't end, but I guess uh, the dancing needs to begin because we're old and we're not going to get the last two. So please enjoy the rest of the year. I'll do one more thing. Let's give a big hand to the Thunderbolt and the Brown Palace staff All right. who made this evening possible. <laughs> a lot of this couldn't have been done without our spouses. So, Laura, would you come up here and get these roses. Oh, wow, wow. Yes. 45 years together. <laughs>
For tonight, since this is such a momentous occasion, so I wanted to go back in time just a little bit and uh, give you some music that we were doing in 1963. I was living on 27th and Gilpin in Grandma's house. And we had to move from this block so they can build the new manual. So uh, my folks and their four children were living in Grandma's house, 2731 Gilpin. And uh, my aunt, my dad's sister, her husband, and their two kids were also living in Grandma's house, oh. in the same house. And uh, when we were given, and I don't know why my dad, my folks, we were the last ones to move out of the house because Grandma and Grandpa moved out. They went to 33rd and Franklin Street. But the interesting thing about that, they only got them a two-bedroom home. <laughs> I started kindergarten at Gilpin Elementary School. Yes, uh, yes. So we did. that's our story.
back in 1963, Manual was a neighborhood school, and you were not far. Right. I, uh, my house, it was at 2834 Williams Street, and the principal and everybody else could see my front porch. So uh, if I wanted to play hooky, I had to go out the back door <laughs> to get away from them. <laughs> this is something anybody on a reunion committee knows and understands. But what's it like to connect with folks from, you know, across the, the ages? It's really refreshing and eye-opening. We've got one gentleman who he graduated uh, first in our class. He got a scholarship to Harvard. He's been all over the Middle East and around the world. Um, I worked for Gates Rubber Company. They sent me around the world several times. Um, and then to share those experiences from a different perspective now and looking back and it's really a privilege to come back and share that with the students, which is part of the reunion activities that are going to be going on at the school next Friday. So the class of 63 actually talks to today's manual students. You got that right. There's a group out there called Friends of Manual that is comprised of alumni from many years. Mayor Hancock has spoken at the Friends of Manual breakfast. Um, I understand the deputy mayor and the city attorney are manualites. I think we've got City Hall wrapped up. Uh, it, it, that's a blessing. And so you know, just to come and interact with people and to share our s manual experience. Well, we're, we're happy to share a little Thunderbolt pride, I guess, here on. <laughs> yeah, I wore my Thunderbolt watch for the interview. So <laughs> Let's go back to 1963. Uh, what was high school like? It was an interesting time in our nation's history. The park up there at 28th and Williams was just one block. 28th Avenue went all the way through and they, we used to pitch horseshoes out there, play football um, naturally there would be fights after school and whatever you're, you're going to have things like that but uh, it had a real sense of neighborhood pride because it was so mixed we had Jewish people Japanese, Germans I think as a result of the um, release of the or the aftermath of World War II, my dad was a porter on the railroad, and they did bring some um, POWs up to the um, camp up in Greeley. So after the war, they kind of settled in, and it was just a, a mix of people. I had an experience in Singapore when the um, director told me, and this is my first time there, and he says, "Well, Michigan, you know, it's going to be eye opener for you because you're going to have to learn how to eat hot, spicy noodles with." chopsticks. I said, okay. So we go, I, I ordered, picked up the chopsticks and started going to town. Said, Where'd you learn how to do that? I said, you had to grow up in East Denver. I know a lot of things. And that's just the way it was. It, it really, uh, we didn't look at each other as black, white, brown, yellow. We were neighborhood and one manual. Even the after school fights in the park right across from manual in 1963, they were a tussle. They were fisticuffs. It wasn't as deadly or as bloody as things right. can be these days. Yeah, we actually had to fight because you'd make up a fist or something and uh, you wouldn't have the violence. That, or, you know, our colors were red and blue, so we wouldn't have fit in with the Crips or the Bloods because, uh, you know, that, that was our school colors and we were proud of it. I want, I do, I want to. The Supreme Court ruled against mandatory reciting of the Lord's Prayer or Bible verses in public schools. Uh, later that summer, the March on Washington took place, and then the next fall, President Kennedy was assassinated. As you think back on that era, did you realize you were in such a transitional time for the country? No, I really didn't. Um, as a teenager, these, these things, the March on Washington was awesome. I had never been to D.C., and then to see that many people there and to hear the speech and everything, that was really encouraging. And it really kind of prepared me because later on I went into the uh, military and I got stationed in the Deep South. So some of the things that uh, the people and Dr. King were fighting against or whatever like that, I kind of had a foretaste of it. But growing up in East Denver, you didn't experience segregation and some of the some of the racial issues in the country were news to you yes they were uh when i saw on television when they were having a protest at woolworth's and i was thinking about we used to go down to woolworth's at 16th and champa and hey that's where you'd meet and eat and see everything i remember my first job uh, working 
I was had a job washing dishes at the Walgreens at 16th and Stout. People don't remember that restaurant that used to be in there, whatever. But uh, every, now when I lie. Kept... Besides a tree, <laughs> a little more prominent than that, a tree. A statue. A statue. A kind of a statue, but not, no, not a boat. No, a bell. <laughs> You're on the right track. Uh, uh, what was missing, there was a newel post out there and it had a globe. And those were one of the few things that came over from the old school. And when the globe got knocked off, I don't know where. I was on staff here from 87 to 92. Uh, I tried, 85 to 92. I tried to find that globe and I went all, all over. They said it was in the basement, it was up on the third floor, never could find it. But one of the things that exists from the third, uh, from the old school, is this item here. To, there's probably 500 of these floating around. Most of you have never seen this before. You know what? Anybody knows what this is? Where did everybody meet in the old manual? The well. The well. This is a railing from the well. When I started this alumni group, I, I did not have one. Now I have five of these. I just picked this up from class. The well was between the first and second floor into the basement. It was where everybody met and congregated. Oh, there the the stairwell. Yeah. Stairwell. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. about. Yeah. And there was a beam going across there, and uh, club initiations used to walk across that, and it was very dangerous. They never did it during school, but after school it was initiation. So that's it. Now, Al might want to say something. You want to say something about. And our, our Don Short, because he helped with the, both of them helped with the uh, showcase manual that we just came from down there. Hey, this, a lot of work. Jim did most of the work. I came in later and helped. And for some bragging, the class of 1960, a lot of our stuff is up here. And uh, I've sold about six CDs already. Everything in those showcases and this alumni room is in a CD. They're $5, I believe. Uh, Tony's going to take some to sell tomorrow night. But... A lot of work has gone in, and it's worth it. And a lot of manual pride in these rooms. And uh, like I say, this this has really been a project. And I appreciate the alumni room. And uh, back in here, there's a lot of yearbooks and stuff back in there. And I have a couple of sisters who are actually going to donate their yearbooks because their kids don't want them. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the history of growing up. But like I say, Jim did most of this work, and then uh, a lot of work has been done with this. And like I said, on this table right here, that's the achievements of the graduates, and Jim did that. And Dorothy that Hayden Porter is on that, and uh, the judge, who's the judge out of your okay. class, yeah. 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 Patterson is on there. These were things that done individuals told me about or I knew about, checked it out beyond there. Sorry. But like I said, Jim and I also like for basketball players. You hear stories, somebody went to the NBA, somebody didn't, somebody went to Globetrotters. We checked all that out to confirm that it really didn't happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know. You know and uh, so like I said, a lot of work has been done here.
And Don Short helped with this, and he helped with Showcase Manual. Don, you're the historian for the 6064. Yeah, I'm going to well, piggyback off Al. Mostly Jim and Al did work, and I just did a lot of uh, research here for our five year reunion. And I could go to Jim looking for information. And uh, looking up some of the history, I was uh, telling someone here that, uh, you know, the old man burned down in 1953. And I started thinking, where was I in 1953? Well, I was going to Gilpin at the time. But then I started asking my parents, I asked my mother, I said, what were we doing? Because everybody said it, it created a lot of commotion and everybody was trying to find out what's going on. And I just was trying to understand or even um, find out where was I when the old man you burned down. But I don't know today, so I don't know if any of you know where you were at the time the old man you burned down. Do any of you know? I was there. You were there? Did you see it? I saw the fire, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I researched uh, the Rocky Mountain News down at the uh, main library. And we got a couple of photographs of the Rocky Mountain News header on the front page and it shows the fire engine and the building just blazing. So, so, but I think the new manual was in construction at the time, so the students just moved from the old manual over to the new manual. And I guess there's some underlying stories about how the old school I was the old manual. The Schneckelbergers went through manual 1952 to 65. My older brother, when he was a sophomore at the old manual, they had some sort of initiation for sophomores and he smarted off, so they gave him the worst. They took him to the well, they had some football players hiding in the bottom. They threw him over the well and the football players caught him. That was one of the initiations. Michigan and I had a private tour some months ago when we first started talking about the reunion. Al and Jim were our gracious hosts then and we saw this room and I shared with some of you how nostalgic that whole thing was the first time I came back into Manual. And uh, I, the, there's so much I could say, but just to say that Jim and Al have done all of what you see and more as volunteers. They do not have a budget. And they have really advocated for the Class of 63 establishing its own historical exhibit uh, display downstairs because there's so much from the class of 63. We were a great class, but we're not really represented downstairs because of space issues. So we had brainstormed about somehow in connection with the 50th anniversary that we would try to support Jim and Al in getting a case and pulling together additional memorabilia on top of what they have, and they have a lot. We couldn't do all of that at one time, but I'm hoping that all of you will um, agree later on, sometime hopefully within the next 120 days, six months or whatever, that we will talk about that again and try to be supportive. Julia has, Don has, Dorothy Boyd, a lot of folks, and and um, uh, Gordon Bromwell, a lot of folks who are not here right this minute, but they've been in there with Jim and Al, while some of us have been off doing other things, but we all support the concept, and we appreciate Jim and Al, everything you've done. Uh, Al has a DVD, a CD, that I think Tony's going to make available to you all later, uh, which has, which is the, a still life black and white of 1963 activities at Manual. Uh, a prom, maybe, is in there, gymnastics that's, activities. That's, that's, that's not on this CD. Okay, that's, that's a different that's, one. That's, that's, I gave you a black and white CD. Yes, yes. They came from the Western History Department.